Good morning. Today I'm going to look at a couple of verses from James 1. Uh, uh, we are very fortunate to have this amazing book. I know you can get it online and everything. There's no excuse for not having a Bible to look at, even when you're out and about. Um, but uh, it, within it are contained so many different lessons from life in the stories of the people who it, uh, it tells, the stories of, of people who are uh, very, very great and good like David, uh, but it also tells us what they did wrong um, and how they got how God got them out of the situation. It tells us about people who did things that were wrong and never, never understood what they were doing was wrong. Um, there's so much. We don't have to experience all the difficulties of life <coughs> to learn from the things that are in the Bible. They're written there so that we don't have to make the same mistakes, that we can be warned that the consequences for certain actions are dire and, and to be careful. And um, James uh, here in James 1, um, 21, he says, um, receive with meekness the implanted word. He's He's talking about the word, again, as in Peter, it says the same thing, as if the word was a planted seed. Jesus talked about the word of God being the seed. An implanted word, that is, it's been put into us. You know, when you read the word, the aim is that the lessons of the word and the wisdom and the understanding and the truths get planted into our lives. They're, they're planted so... <clears throat> Receive with meekness the implanted word. The implanted word will grow. But the next verse says, But be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. And there are people who go around in this world who know their Bible very well. Very well indeed. And they could tell you, better than you could, perhaps better than I could, they could say where a verse is and where the story of this person is or that person. But they know it all. But they think, and they think that's all they need to do. But James is quite clear that we have to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So when you read the word, you want to look at it from the point of view of, Lord, what does this, this passage I'm reading teach me about my life and my attitudes, my ways, my thoughts, my thinking, my, my words, my behaviours, my, my thought patterns? What does it teach me? What does God want me to be doing differently? Because Christianity, just like so many other things, it, it's not what you say, it's who you are and what you do that shows whether you're really a Christian or not, whether you're really born again. And he says, um, he, he compares it in the next two or three verses, do read them, um, uh, 22 to 25. Um, he says, if, if, you, if you just listen and you don't do, it, you're like a person who goes to the mirror and looks in the mirror and sees what's, what's, what they see and goes away without doing anything about it. Now, um, when we go to a mirror, it's usually when we're washing in the morning, perhaps, or shaving or whatever, putting on makeup if you put on makeup or whatever. You look in the mirror. And you look in the mirror and you see that your hair is sticking out on end. And what do you do? Go away and do nothing? No. If you're like me, and when, I, <laughs> when I've been asleep, my hair can be all over the place. And Terry will say to me, oh, I feel sorry for the bush that you've been pulled through backwards. You look like that, you know. But you go to the mirror and you see the condition of your hair or you see, um, you see that where you've been doing some interior decorating or something and you've got paint on your nose and you see it, right? And you go away and you don't do anything about it. Well, you wouldn't, would you? You'd get your comb out and comb your hair. Wet, wet, yeah, wet your hair to get it not to stop sticking up. Or you, you know, you, we, we use a mirror with a view to acting on what we see in the mirror. You know, if we don't, I mean, how often have you, have you, have you had 
uh, had, to, had to take a mirror to look at something that hurts on your back or something. And when you see it, you see what you, what's wrong and you can put some ointment on it or you can deal with it. We look in a mirror with a view to doing something about what we see and we make sure that we are presentable to the world. And this is what he compares the mirror. He says, when you look in the mirror of the word of God, this is a mirror, this Bible is a mirror. And it says in the verse before, the one couple of verses before, it says, let every, every man be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. So you look at that verse, quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. What is there about my behaviour that might not match that? Do I, I, am I like a, am I like a, um, a fuse, a, a, a glowing fuse that you, if you blow on it with some air, it'll burst into flame. You know, do you get angry very quickly? If you do, that's that's not that. If you're, if every time something happens, you're the first one to speak. You nobody else gets a word in edgeways because you just talk. You know. Slow to speak. The anger of God does not work the righteousness. And the anger of man does not work the righteousness of God. That's the reason that we shouldn't be angry, that we should be slow to anger. So what can we do? We can seek the Lord and ask the Lord to change us, to teach us how to be more like the picture that he's given to us in that verse that he's planting into, into our hearts. We have to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. You hear the thoughts I bring every day. What do you do with them? I don't, I'm not saying they're all from God at all. They're not nearly as valuable as the word of God. But if you listen to my words and my thoughts, which I hope have come, have been prompted by God, and they point you to him, and then you go away, and the next time you listen, you think, oh, she said quite an interesting thing yesterday and I never gave a, thought, a, a moment's thought to it. I just turned it off afterwards and got on with the day. This is what we can be with the word of God and we shouldn't be, you know. We should be like this. If you look at your natural face in a mirror, you don't go away and forget what you thought, see, but you look into this perfect law, the law of liberty. This is a law of liberty. What a contradiction. There's a word, there's a thought to think about. How can a law be liberty? This is liberty. This is liberating. It frees us from sin. It frees us to be all that God wanted us to be. Think of this as a mirror when you read it. And think about what you've read and apply it to your life. Because we want to get more and more like Jesus. And the way to do that is to look into the mirror and see where we come up short, where we don't quite look right, and, and ask God to help us to change our hearts, our minds, our attitudes, and our ways. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.